Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Budsy Bottle with the wand dab of the day. Hello, everybody. Today is Tuesday. Thanks for joining me. As always, if you enjoy today's video, don't forget to subscribe and join the family. Hit the like button if you can, and send a comment because I reply to all of them myself, and I really enjoy them. Hello, everybody. You know, one of the things you don't get here is sugarcoating. That's right. But you also don't get dragged through the mud. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to face life's challenges. Because in a personal way, on a global way, employee way, we have injuries, illness, grief, divorce, death, the unknown. There's a crazy amount of stuff that everybody faces every day. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be in pain to face challenges. Everyone does. So how do we deal with them? Well, you got to turn towards reality. That's right. A lot of times people want to turn away from life rather than towards it. People are masters of avoidance. But if you want to be present to enjoy life and be more effective in it, we've got to find ways to face reality. When we're guided by the reality principle, we develop a deeper capacity to deal with life more effectively, and what was once difficult could become easier. Once something frightened us, now may feel familiar. Life becomes more manageable, and there's something even deeper, because we can see that we've grown stronger. So you know what you're going to get? You're going to get self-confidence out of this. That's right. So you'll grow even more still. This is the basis of feeling a capable individual, which is the geyser of a satisfying life. It is. So let's embrace our life as it is, rather than as we wish it would be. Think about this today. This is not what I wrote, but this is what happened. I'm laying on a table in a radiology center, being pushed in place it hurts more than I've ever been hurt in that area before. And you know what I'm thinking? It'll be over soon. Got to get it done. Try not to worry about it. So I embraced the horror of what was happening rather than praying for it to be, oh my God, how horrible. You know what I'm saying? So what you have to remember is you have to kind of be present to enjoy what you have and not what you don't have. Because being present means being present to life. And there's freedom to life. There's freedom to enjoying the good and the bad. Think about it. The horror of bad is still an emotion that we have to embrace. And we have to really have a chance to enjoy it, believe it or not, to value our full life's experiences. The good comes with the bad. So when you finally surrender, and I mean you got to surrender because everybody does this kicking and screaming, saying, oh my God, I got to deal with the bad too? Yes, that's the reality of who we are. And that will give us a chance to do what we can do. Otherwise, you're stymied. You've got to take your time on this. You've got to look at this like the tortoise and the hare. The slow and the study. Because if you hurry, if you hurry, you're going to get ahead of yourself. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to cut corners. You're going to try to get out of the pain. You're going to try to deal with the situation. You've got to slow it down. The slower you go, believe it or not, the sooner you can get there. We've got to be slow, disciplined, with incremental growth. Because that's what's going to give us lasting change. Practice gratitude. That's right, it's easy to count your troubles rather than your blessings. Think about it. How many times do we always say to ourselves how bad we have it? How few times we say how good we have it. I didn't die on that table. Okay? So you've got to have a change in perspective. You've got to recognize the good and receive it with gratitude. Because that's the recipe. That is the recipe for emotional health and well-being. This attitude opens and enlarges the possibility that you can have good even during bad. So, 
You got to remember to stay close to your feelings. That's right. Even the painful ones. You know, often we find our feelings, I guess, scary, mean, heavy, confusing. So we try to push them away and keep them at a distance. But we need our feelings in order to find satisfaction and pleasure in life. So getting rid of your feelings will backfire on us. It drains us of our psychological energy. Feelings are the gas of our engine, of our personalities, whether we're crying or laughing. They're the source of motivation. They're the energy, the vitality, the juice of our lives. So guess what? Without these feelings and the bad ones, our lives just wouldn't have a personality. So, you know what? There'd be no dimension. There'd be no joy, creativity, and fun because there'd be no loss. There wouldn't be me. And you know what? Without our feelings, you couldn't tell what mattered even. So what we have to remember to do, we're taught this, but wow, do we forget it. You've got to accept life's successes and failures as a part of the same journey. You know, if you look on the left when you're driving down the road, you're going to see cow pasture. You could look on the right and see high rises. So we're all learning. No one gets it right the first time every time. You know what you have to have is a more compassionate attitude towards you. Towards you. And you got to try. You got to succeed. You got to fail. And you got to try again. Because that's the only way you're going to feel the parameters and understand what we have to go through to succeed and then recover from the failure. We all learn to be humble in our own way and develop a view of ourselves in our own way. But no matter how we mature or how successful we become, the child within us still needs a mentor and friends to see us through the life. You could be my opa, 103 and a half years old, and he needed people in his life. You can't do it alone. So remember this. Let's tend to our loving relationships because it's easy to neglect what matters most. Remember that. It's easy to remember that the magical, loving, attentive care and hard work you get from marriage, family, and friendships is dynamic and a living experience and something you choose to be a part of every single day. It's something that's earned every single day. And it's a process of overcoming sometimes distance and separateness, but you accept that reality. And no matter whether you hurt one another, the nature of these pains cannot be avoided because we cannot devote ourselves only to good. We must remember, just like the weather, that essentially good comes with bad. We got to take responsibility for both. We've got to remember to forgive. We've got to accept the forgiveness of others. And if we fall down, by golly, we've got to get back up. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to fall down again. And you know what has to happen at the end of that? You got to get back up again, too. That's the truth. And that means something, too. Let's do our dab of the day and remember that we, we can accomplish and get through just about anything, okay? Not brain surgery, it's life. Here we go. We're gonna turn on our sesh mode and go for our magnetic induction heating don't forget to throw the carb cap on. Oops. Don't forget to throw the carb cap on and the budgie bottle. Here we go. Wow, this is cool.
Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me. This is a great bond. Incredible hits. And the wand only made it better. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful day. And remember, we can accomplish anything and get past our differences. Cheers.